keep this intro short because this video is very long and also long intros are very boring. So today is the first video in my new collection and declutter series where I am going to be going through every single makeup product that I own in all of these drawers and decide individually what I want to keep and what I want to part ways with. My goal isn't to make my collection smaller necessarily, it's just to curate it so that everything I have works for my skin tone, is in a formulation that I like, and there are products that I actually want to use. I do have a really big collection, but that's because makeup is one of my favorite hobbies like in the entire world, and it's also my job, so I do get sent a lot of stuff, which of course contributes to the size of the collection. But that being said, I would not consider myself a hoarder because I'm not afraid to throw products out and give them away. Because here's the thing, I do go through my collection a lot and I throw out old products. So there might be a few old ones in there, but for the most part, I just want you guys to know my collection is like good new stuff that can be used without having like weird bacteria inside of it. But I've never sat down and looked at all of my products in the same category and said, okay, which ones of these are still good, but I still am never gonna wear it. Like, which ones are not getting enough love because I need to pass them on while they're still good. And so that is why I'm doing this project. And after I'm done, I want to do a brand new makeup collection. As I kind of like compress some of these drawers down, I'm going to be combining them and I am going to be reorganizing it after the fact and hopefully do a new updated makeup collection, which would be really fun because it's been a long time since I've done it. And this is right next to my little desk, which you can see this little guy was given to me by a subscriber at one of my meetups, which is really cool. This is the desk that I edit at. And now I'm getting carried away in this video. I edited it already. It's like 45 minutes long, even without this intro. So let's go ahead and get started, yeah. All right, guys, I have a fresh coffee. I have a pack of makeup wipes in case we need to swatch something. And I am ready to get started with this project. So this first drawer is my foundations and my concealers. And for the sake of this video, I went through my everyday makeup bag and pulled out all of the things that I'm also currently using. So this is the full inventory of every single foundation and concealer that I own all in one drawer. And actually looking at it, I don't think it looks totally terrible. It probably does compared to people that don't have a ton of makeup, but a lot of these things were sent. And as I go through them, I will get into that. Every single thing in this drawer is within one year old. I do not keep things that are gross. In fact, I have a little bit of a phobia of it where I think that I actually get rid of things before they're expired, thinking that they are. I always play it better safe than sorry with that stuff. So we're gonna do my foundations first and then we will move into the concealers and I'm a little bit nervous <laughs> because I just am. Ah! I feel like these videos are good though because they force you to look at every single product and kind of get reacclimated to what you own because I think it's really easy to have all this makeup and stick it in a drawer and not really know even what's in there, you know? I think that you tend to get blinded to certain items. You go in here and you immediately see a couple that you like and you go for those and you don't even see the other ones. It's like they disappear. So I guess the easiest way to start is to pick out the items that I love the most because we know that those are staying. And of course, I'm going to start with my beloved Laura Mercier Silk Cream Foundation get you a little more in focus. This is my absolute go-to foundation. If I don't wanna think about doing my makeup, if I wanna do it quick, I always go for this one. I am obsessed with this foundation. They actually reformulated it and I was absolutely heartbroken, so I went and bought three backups, which are here. So, I mean, yeah, I love this stuff. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep all three of the backups because I am truly, truly obsessed with this product. I love it. It looks good on my skin. It looks natural. It's a good everyday foundation. I am so sad that they reformulated it, but I think that the oil-free version that they are now offering is more comparable to this one, but I haven't tried them. I actually wanna purchase both the oil-free and the dry skin formula and do some sort of comparison video and tell you guys if it compares to the original because this is so good. And I'm in the color Rose Ivory, if you were wondering. Another foundation that I love and I will reach for this one especially if I have an event to go to. It's very, very full coverage. It's a beautiful foundation. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear and I'm in the color Ecru. I love this. It doesn't beat my Laura Mercier in terms of everyday wear only because it's a little bit more difficult to apply. 
because it's so thick, but this looks so good if you need a full face, if you're going on a date, or if you have an event of some sort, like this is amazing, and it really does last all day, so love that. I actually have a second bottle of it hidden back here. This is an older one that I think was meant to go in an empties video that I never ended up like completely finishing the last bit and I opened up the other one which I shouldn't have done. So I'm just going to go ahead and toss this because this one's older and it's also almost used up. Another one of my favorites is the Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua. I'm in the color BR22. They changed that. Originally it was BR20 but they changed their numbering. I love this. It's very, very light coverage. You guys are going to think I'm crazy, but sometimes I actually put a light layer of this over top of the Laura Mercier Silk Cream. It just gives a really, really pretty finish, and it's a little crazy to mix those two because the Laura Mercier is already pretty on its own, but I just really like it. I've never been a huge fan of wearing this foundation completely on its own. It's a little bit light coverage for me, but in the summer, sometimes it's just what I need, so definitely keeping this one. I have a couple of new ones that I haven't even tried. The first one is the Kat Von D Locket Tattoo Foundation. I hauled this and I have swatched it on my hand. It's a beautiful color. It's really amazing coverage. I just haven't given it a full try on my face yet. So I'm thinking about maybe doing like a first impressions of this product, but I'm not sure because it's not like a new product. I just, it's new to me. I haven't tried it. So thinking about that, let me know what you guys think. I also have the new Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. This is in color 1.0, and the Locket Tattoo Foundation is in color, let's see, Light 46. So the Naked Skin by Urban Decay is another new one that I have not tried yet, but I'm excited to try it because I've heard really good things about this product. Another favorite is my CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous 3-in-1 Foundation. This is my favorite drugstore foundation, and I do have an entire video on this product, so I will link it below if you guys want to see it. But I really love this. I think it's a fabulous foundation. Another one that I love and I have an entire video review on is the Rimmel Wake Me Up Foundation. This is actually my second one that I've purchased because I really did love it, and I wore it a lot back when I made that video. I haven't been wearing it recently, but it is a really beautiful, foundation. It is a little bit glittery and I could see how that could turn some people away but if you love that really radiant finish this is a beautiful foundation and I will link my review and demo of this foundation below as well. One that I really don't like is the CoverGirl CG Smoothers Hydrating Makeup in 720 Creamy Natural. This is the strangest product. It has a really weird formulation. It's kind of thin and it seems to just spread across my skin instead of setting in. It's really strange, I don't like it. You can't swatch these in the store, which is one problem with getting drugstore foundations, and so I didn't even know that the consistency would be like that until I got it home, and I swatched it on my hand and immediately was like, this is not a good product. I put a little bit on my cheek, and I didn't even do my whole face, so this is definitely going to go. This product here, the Fairy Drops, I don't even know what this is. All I know is that it is old, I don't even know when I got this. I feel like it's at least, it's probably at its year mark and it's also been open and it has a sponge applicator so it's probably not very hygienic. So this one I'm just gonna go ahead and toss. Oh, this is a new product that I haven't given a fair shot to yet. This is the Meryl Norman CC Cream Broad Spectrum SPF 30 in the color Light Ivory. This is a beautiful color match for me, and it also has a really nice thick coverage, which I love because I am not a fan of BB creams and CC creams that give you no coverage at all. I want something that's lighter than a foundation but still gives me coverage or else I feel like why am I even wearing it. So this I'm really excited to try. I haven't worn it on my face yet. I've just swatched it on my hands. I actually was just sent this but I'm very excited to give this one a try. I have two products here that are really really similar and I actually bought them knowing that they were kind of dupes for each other. This is the L'Oreal Magic Nude Liquid Powder in the color... Creamy Natural 314, and this is the Maybelline Dream Wonder Fluid Touch Foundation in the color 50 Creamy Natural. Between these two, the L'Oreal one is a lot older. I bought this one, I would say at least eight months before I bought this one, and this one's also a better color match, so I'm going to be keeping the Maybelline and throwing out the L'Oreal because I do think that this product has probably gotten a little bit old. I opened it up and I put a little bit on my hands, and it just kind of... It, I 
don't know, it kind of oxidized. It just, it went a little funky. So this one's gonna get tossed. I have the Balm Shelter Tinted Moisturizer. I don't even think that this has a color name on it. This has a beautiful formulation and coverage, but it is just the wrong color for me. It's way too dark. This product is actually brand new. I've only swatched it on my hand once. So I'm gonna see if Blair wants it because her skin is a little more olive toned than mine. If not, I'm gonna give it to my mom. But I'm really sad because it's so pretty. Like the coverage and the formulation is so creamy and it just looks like it would be a really good product, but it's just the wrong color and I there's no way that I can wear it. I also have the Makeup Forever HD foundation in the color, how do you even know? In 135. This foundation, I have such a weird relationship with this foundation because I have loved it in the past and Sometimes I get it again thinking like, oh, that product is like so good and then it just doesn't work for me at all. This is the strangest product. It either looks really, really good or it doesn't even hold up a candle to my Laura Mercier. So I don't know. I lost the lid because Pinecone actually knocked it off the counter and it shattered. So it doesn't have a lid, which means I can't really give it away to anyone like that's kind of weird so I'm just gonna keep playing with it because I feel like this is a foundation that people love and I have loved it in the past so I just need to figure out a way to make it work how do you guys apply this do you use a beauty blender or a brush or your fingers let me know in a comment because I need to figure something out with this foundation it's really nice it just it looks so good on some other people and then with me it's like so hit or miss okay I have the L'Oreal magic skin beautifier BB cream in light guys this is the weirdest product this is so strange and remember it's supposed to be the light color right because this is so dark and I'm going to show you a demo of this because it is the strangest product of all time okay so it comes off like a white gray color right and it has these like little beads in it and then as you blend it in it turns the color of your skin look at that the problem is as you blend it gets darker and darker and darker and it turns like this kind of orange color and it keeps getting more and more orange and then it also kind of oxidizes even further. I don't know if you guys are really even gonna be able to tell how orange this is compared to my skin with the lights. Like I'm sure you can tell a little bit at least, but in person, this is so orange for my skin and this is the light one. That does not look like a light color. So yeah, this one I'm gonna pass on to someone who maybe would have a better color match with it because it's kind of like a cool concept. It just doesn't work for me because of the color match. I feel like if the color match was better, I would probably be super intrigued behind like the science of this product and I would want to use it, but it just doesn't work. This Derma Blend Professional Cover Cream in the color Rose Beige. This has just gotten old. It's kind of dried out. I didn't even use that much of it. Like I just, I don't know. I never really bonded with this product, if that makes sense. So this one I'm just gonna toss because it has gotten old, it's gone a little bit funky, it's kind of like really hard and just kind of strange. I did try to swatch it, so we're gonna let this one go in the trash. Okay, tucked away in this corner are two foundations that were sent to me by Bare Minerals. These are the Bare Skin Pure Brightening Serum Foundation, and they sent me it in the colors Bare Shell 02 and Bare Linen 03, and I did swatch these, and the Bare Linen is too yellow for me, and the Bare Shell works. So I'm gonna keep the Bare Shell, pass on the Bare Linen potentially to Blair, because she does have more of a yellow skin tone, see if she wants this, and put this in my to try pile because obviously since it's still in the packaging, I have done nothing but swatch this product. It hasn't actually been used. So I need to test that out along with my Kat Von D and my Urban Decay Naked Skin and I'm gonna let Blair have this one. Then we have three MAC foundations. These are the Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. I don't normally wear MAC skin stuff it breaks me out i can't wear their studio fix fluid i can't wear their studio sculpt it looks amazing on but i just cannot wear it my skin hates it but i do love having like one products like that just for special occasions because they do have just amazing coverage so i was actually sent these and all three of them are in the wrong color for me i have nc15 NC20 and NW25 and I'm color NW20 so literally like the three colors surrounding mine that aren't mine were sent to me which is really frustrating. I did swatch them just to see if I could maybe make one of them work. The NW25 is insanely dark. It's like crazy so that one's gonna go and then the NC20 like kind of worked. I don't know. I kind of feel like maybe 
keeping it and just trying it because I just want to see if I like the formulation and then if I really like it and it doesn't break me out, which it probably will, then I can go buy the NW20. So I'm going to keep the NC20 just for testing purposes, but I'm going to get rid of the NC15 and the NW25 because they just don't, I mean, they're just not my color. There's no point in keeping it. Tucked way in the back, I have my NARS Radiant Cream Compact Foundation. The color in it is Valoris, and then I also have a Mont Blanc. This is a really beautiful foundation. It's a great cream foundation. It's good for travel because it's not a liquid bottle, like if you're carrying on your bags but I forget about it because it was way tucked in the back, which I need to remember not to do. This isn't an old product. I swatched it, it's still super creamy. This is definitely within one year old, so I'm gonna like keep it up towards the front and try to use it because I'm curious about this product. I used it once and I don't even remember that much about it, but I definitely wanna try it again. So I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna keep this color as well because I swatched them both and they both work for me. This one's a little bit lighter but I need to remember to try this. So I actually feel like I should put this in a separate pile. I'm gonna put this in with my brand new to try products because I don't really remember it even though I've tried it. Okay, and then we've cleared out the back except this, which is concealer. So I'm gonna push my concealer back and kind of like round up all the rest of the foundation so you guys can all see it. And let's finish up these foundations because there's a lot of them. This is a product that I love. This is the Lancome Miracle Cushion. I love this stuff. It looks super gross because I have used it. But this, I just, I love this foundation. This is probably like within three months old. It's definitely not too old. I need to wear this more though. I wore it for a couple of weeks straight when I first got it and then it got rotated out for something else. So I definitely need to use this again. This was actually one of the products that I pulled out of my everyday bag because it was still in there because it's recent. I really love this product and I am in the color 250 Bisque W. This is the Physician's Formula Organic Wear CC Cream in the color light. This is really beautiful. It's a nice, like, thick coverage. It's not super full coverage because it is a CC cream, but it has more coverage than some other drugstore CC creams. So definitely love this, and I'm going to be keeping this and trying it out more. I also have two of the Dr. Jart BB Beauty Bombs. This is the Black Label Detox, and this one is the Premium. I got these, I think, in a sample box, and I don't remember when I got them. So I don't know. They both have sunscreen in them, which means that they definitely have an absolute expiration date. They smell fine. They still swatch really beautifully. So I kind of want to give them each one day of wear just to see if I like the formulation enough to possibly buy it in full size. But it scares me a little bit because I don't remember when I got these. So I feel like I probably got them before I broke my back, which would make them right at the one year mark. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I try them or should I just toss them? What do you guys think? Write me a comment and I will do what you guys say in regards to that. Okay, another one that I have is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi in the color cool. No, that's not the color. The color is C3 Creamy Natural. When in doubt, I always go for the color called Creamy Natural if I'm buying a foundation at the drugstore. That seems to work in several of the drugstore lines. This product is beautiful. The color is not a complete perfect match for me. It is a little bit purpley, which doesn't really make sense. It's not really pink undertones. It's more like a mauve undertone that's a little bit strange, but it works enough. Like it's, it's not a crazy color match. I can kind of like powder over top and make it work. So I'm definitely going to keep this because I want to play with the actual formulation a little bit more. And I mean, if it becomes like a holy grail, like I try it a couple times and I'm like, this is the best thing ever, then I'll go and try to find a more perfect color match. But for now, this is fine, so I'm going to be keeping it. I have two of the Rimmel Lasting Finish Foundation. I have it in color 102 Warm Ivory and 103 True Ivory. The Warm Ivory works better for my skin tone. The True Ivory runs a little bit ashy on me, which is a little strange because it should just be a you know, a true beige color as the name suggests, but this one definitely runs a little ashy, which is really odd. So I'm gonna be keeping the warm ivory, passing on true ivory, it might work for Blair's skin tone better, so I'm gonna let her try it. This is a foundation that I've purchased multiple times. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser 
Treatment makeup in the color, probably Creamy Natural. What color are you? Creamy Ivory, okay, close enough. This is a product that I have repurchased because it's really good. The sponge tip applicator freaks me out a little bit, but it is said to be antimicrobial, so I mean, I don't know. Honestly, this is a really good foundation if you want something to blend in super quickly. I always use this when I am just going through a phase where I can't be bothered to do my makeup every day or if I'm just having a day where I'm like I don't even want to do it this is a good one because the Lauren Mercier silk cream which is as I said my go-to that one you do have to blend it like it's definitely not something that you can just kind of slap on and go whereas this is so this is actually still sealed I threw out my old one because it had gotten a little like grungy looking so I have this one and I'm not going to open it and break the seal until I'm ready to use it so that is why it is still in its packaging but I do love that foundation for sure this lone foundation over here is the Laura Geller Baked Liquid Radiance Foundation in the color Fair. And this was sent to me, which is why it's still in its packaging. This I swatched. I haven't used it on my face yet, but I have swatched it. And it is a little bit peachy for me. So it definitely works enough that I can try it and kind of color correct just a little bit with my powder just to see how I like the formulation and the wear time and whether it breaks me out because that's always a big thing with foundation. So I definitely love the coverage. When I swatch things that I get sent, if I don't like the formulation, or the coverage levels, it doesn't even make it into the drawer. It just immediately goes to someone else. So this was one that I definitely liked enough to give it a try. It's just not a perfect color match, but again, you know, I definitely want to try this one. I have the Rimmel BB Cream Matte 9-in-1 Skin Perfecting Super Makeup in Light Medium. This is a beautiful product. It's one of my favorite drugstore BB creams for sure, if not my absolute favorite. It has a really nice consistency. I like the formulation. I like the coverage levels. The color works really well for me. This is really pretty, so definitely keeping that. I also have the Stay Matte Foundation in the color Light Ivory. This is beautiful. It's almost an exact color match for me, and it is one of my only matte foundations. I think I only have one other one because I do normally prefer a dewy or luminous finish, but it is nice to have a matte one when I'm in the mood to have a matte face, which sometimes I am. So definitely gonna keep this. I really, really like this product. It's a great drugstore product. This one I haven't even tried. It's the CoverGirl Ultra Smooth Foundation. This is the one with the uh, little applicator that like smooths your hairs down and it's in color Creamy Natural. Guys, I bought this because when it first came out, I thought that it looked super gimmicky and therefore cool in the drugstore. But then I got home and I watched a couple of reviews and people just said horrible things about everything about this product. The applicator, the product itself, like people just hated this foundation. So I never even opened it because I'm a little bit scared to try it. Like it's kind of, I feel like it's a waste of doing my makeup if I'm gonna use a foundation that is terrible because that's the base of your face, really. So I like having my foundations always pretty much be something that I know I'm gonna like. And then I play around a little bit with other products, but I don't know, I don't know what to do with this. I actually kind of wanted to do a, I guess kind of a first impressions of this, but like knowing I wasn't gonna like it, it just seemed really like a bad idea. So I don't really know, I might just pass it on, I don't know. It's a very strange product. I also have the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation in the color Ivory. This is another new one that I have not tried yet, so it is going to get moved over to my brand new, you need to try these product pile. I have the CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous Foundation in shade 110. This is another beautiful foundation from the drugstore. I have an entire video demo and review on this that I will link below. I don't like it quite as much as the Outlast Stay Fabulous, but it's a really good drugstore foundation. It has a beautiful finish. It lasted, it's a good color match. I, I just really, really liked this product, so I'm going to be keeping it. I also have the NARS, what is this called? All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation in the color Mont Blanc. This is a weird product because it is so super liquid thin. Like you have to shake it because it separates, but it's also just like the most thin foundation I think I've ever tried. It's almost like putting a true liquid on your face. I feel like liquid foundations 
have the word liquid in their name, but they're more of like a cream product. This is a true liquid. It's really strange. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet, just because I do like fuller coverage than what this offers, but I do wanna try this a couple more times before making my ultimate opinion on it, but those are just kind of like my first thoughts is that the consistency is unique, but also maybe not what I'm looking for. So keeping that for now, but I'm definitely going to like come back to that one and see if I actually do want to keep it. Next, I have the Tarte Maracuja Miracle Foundation in the color Fair. This one actually has an expiration date on the bottom and it is expired. So this one is going to immediately get tossed into the trash, but I did like this foundation. I did get a lot of wear out of it and I think it is a really beautiful product, but um, this one, has got to go. All right, just a few more foundations to get through. This is the Lorac Cocosin Cream Compact in CR4. This product has just kind of dried out. It was a really beautiful product. I think I only tried it twice, so I don't feel like I loved it or else I would have tried it more. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this one because I do think it's a little bit on the older side as well. We have the CoverGirl Clean Whipped Cream Foundation in 320. This is a really, really nice cream foundation. That's what it looks like. I've used it a few times. I really do like it, so I'm going to keep this one. This is one of those products that becomes invisible in my drawer. Like, I never use this, but it's not because I don't love it. It's just I always forget about it, so I'm going to put that towards the front when I put the drawer back together to remind me to use it. Then we have this product, which I haven't even tried. It's still sealed. This is the Revlon Color Stay Whipped in Nude. I do wanna try this. I just haven't had a chance yet. So gonna put that in the front of my drawer as well. Then we have two products that I like both of them. They're both good color matches. They're both a really pretty finish and I haven't given either of them enough love to really have an opinion on them. So I need to give these ones another try. I just remember the first time I tried each of these, I did like it. This is the L'Oreal Visible Lift Serum Foundation in the color. What color are you, classic ivory? And this is the CoverGirl and Olay Tone Rehab Foundation Base in Creamy Natural, as always, right? So these two products are both products that I want to pay more attention to. So they're, again, gonna go towards the front of my drawer because I remember liking both of these. I just, I don't remember if I like them more than other foundations. And if I try these foundations and I find that after wearing them a couple more times, they really aren't living up to some other ones, then I'm gonna go ahead and declutter them at that point. All right, moving on to my concealers. Let's do this. So the first thing is my Bobbi Brown Concealer Palette. I'm obsessed with this. This is actually new. This is my second one that I've had though. It has all of the colors that she has along with the correctors as well. I'm obsessed with this. I was actually given one of these when I met Bobbi Brown like years ago and I loved it and I used up so many of the colors and then I recently did a Bobbi Brown shoot and they asked me if there were any products that I really wanted and this is one that I don't think you can just by. I might be wrong, but I feel like you have to be given this or you have to be a makeup artist. So they gave me a new one of this and I'm very happy because I love it and I love being able to find the perfect concealer no matter what. And also if I ever do a friend's makeup, which I do do from time to time, I have every color that I need and I could even make these into a foundation if I needed to, to get the right color. So this little bin right here are the products that I have not tried. There aren't very many for the concealers. There were way more foundations that I hadn't tried, but actually this one is actually just a backup because I have this one which came out of my everyday makeup bag. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Dark Circle Concealer and Treatment in the color Fair. I love this product. I use this like every single day. I'm currently using this one. This one came out of my everyday makeup bag like I'm using it right now and look how much of it I've used. So this is just a backup so I'm obviously going to be keeping that. These are two like illuminating pins that I just haven't tried yet. This is the L'Oreal Magic Lumi Concealer Corrector and this is the Hard Candy Light Bright. So I haven't used either of these. The seals are still on them so I'm going to try these because I haven't yet. And then this is the Benefit Perk Up Artist uh, Color Correcting Kit. I'll show you this, this is kind of cool. I just haven't tried it yet. But look at this, look how cool this thing is. 
I love it. It has like all the different um, correcting colors, yellow to correct dark circles, and then a cover cream, which looks way too dark for me, and then the brighten. So I'm gonna give that a try, and if the colors just don't suit, I will pass it on. But that is why it is in my two try bin and my one backup. I'm gonna zoom you guys in actually for this part since we're just working on this little basket right here. So the ones on the top are the ones that I probably use the most often, which is why they're on the top. Starting with Benefit Erase Paste. I love this. I'm in the color number one. It's still a dark color for being shade one. Like, look at that. But what I love about this is it is so thick and it's so creamy and it just covers anything. Like, it is that concealer. It covers anything. You do have to set it because it stays kind of sticky and creamy, which is a little bit strange. So you do have to set it with a powder, but this is great if you really have things that you need to cover. So keeping that. I also have my Bobbi Brown Corrector in Light Bisque. This is a great concealer for underneath your eyes. You could use it on top of blemishes. I just love this product. It adds a little bit of extra coverage where I need it. This is actually a new one. I've gone through a couple of pots of this product. Then we have the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Dark Circle Treatment Makeup, which I told you guys about. Love this. And I also have the Neutralizer. I have been using this every single day underneath my eyes, underneath my concealer, just to neutralize any darkness and then putting my concealer on top. I really like this. It works well with the concealer on top and it also works well um, underneath like Benefit Erase Paste or something else. So I definitely like this product. Okay, I have a few shades of my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which I absolutely love. I think I have four of them in here. This is the lightest, this is Chantilly, and then we have a vanilla, I think this is a second vanilla, yeah. And then we have Honey. Honey is good when I am super tan in the summer, keeping that. Vanilla is my everyday shade. I literally wear these every day. This one came out of my makeup bag. I didn't realize that I had two. I must have had one in each of my makeup bags. If you guys watch my Snapchat, I recently condensed my two everyday makeup bags to one makeup bag, and so I probably had one in each, so gonna keep those. And then Chantilly is a good, super, super light color, which you can use underneath foundations to highlight your face. So that is why I have that. It's a beautiful foundation. Like I love this as you can tell because I have four shades. Okay. So the Glow Minerals Corrective Camouflage Kit, I feel like I got this in some sort of Beautycon bag or sample box or something. I definitely didn't buy this. I have used it as you guys can see, but they're just a little bit dry. And I actually have some NYX pencils down at the bottom that I just like a lot better. They're creamier and they're these same colors. So I'm gonna let this one go. I probably will just toss it because the colors are a little bit dry. I don't think anyone will want this. So yeah, I'm just gonna let this one go. I have another one of my Bobbi Brown correctors. This is in Porcelain Bisque. This is a very, very light concealer. You can use it underneath another concealer, underneath your eyes just to brighten, or it works really well for me in the winter when I'm at my absolute palest. So I love these concealers. Then we have my Collection Lasting Perfection Concealer. I have a couple of these because I love them and you can't get them in the US. So every time I do a swap with one of my friends from the UK, I always ask for these. So I have a few of them and I love these. Like this is an amazing drugstore concealer. I'm jealous of you guys that can get it like anytime because I really love it. And I think those are the only ones that I have. Yeah, making sure I didn't have a fourth one under there because at one point I did have four, but I think I used up one of them completely. So I really do love this product and I'm in the color light too, if you were wondering. Here is another one of the products from that Maybelline Instant Age Rewind line. This is the Eraser Dark Spot Treatment Corrector. This is still sealed actually, and I feel like I... I feel like I've never tried this, but then there's part of me that thinks that maybe I owned one a long time ago because I've been using these products for a while. I honestly don't remember, so I'm going to keep this and try it. it like I said, it's still sealed, so I'm gonna give this one a try, but I honestly don't remember if I've tried it, which if I have tried it, that's a bad sign because that probably means it wasn't any good, but I can't even remember if I've ever owned that before. I have the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in number 10 light. This is a really good dupe for the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealers that I was showing you guys that I have four of that I absolutely love, which is why I bought this product. It is a good dupe, but I feel like I'm never gonna reach for this one over the NARS ones just because I do have those in every color 
and it just is kind of my go-to. So I do think that I'm going to keep this because it's a good dupe. I'm just going to use it up, but I won't be repurchasing it just because it is so similar to a product that I already have in my collection that I love. But this is a really good dupe, so if you guys are more on a budget and you want to try a concealer like that, this one would be a good one to try. Another one that I really like from Maybelline is the Master Conceal Camouflaging Concealer in number 20 light. I do really like this. It's a very thick full coverage foundation. It's not a foundation, it's a concealer. A full coverage concealer. I really think that it's great. It kind of reminds me of the Kat Von D uh, Tattoo Concealer and the Amazing Cosmetics Concealer. It's in that realm of being a very thick full coverage concealer. So I'm definitely going to be keeping this. I also have the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. This is in the right color. It is NW15, which for concealer I always go one shade lighter. So this is the right color. It needs to be shaken up because it's been laying on its side. But I am going to be keeping this one and giving it some more use because I have not used this little guy in a really long time and I remember really liking it. This is a Ico Touch Up and Go Concealer. The thing about this is it is one of these products. And when I have products that are little um, brush tip like that, I get so grossed out. Like I will use it for the first few weeks when I have it in my makeup bag and I'm excited about it because it's new. But then once it makes it its way back into my drawer and it sits for a little bit, I get very weirded out. So even though this product is not very old, it is going to be tossed because I just get very strange about the fact that it has to be applied out of this area that's had old product sitting on it exposed to the air so this is going to be put in the trash and i think i have one more that's like that yeah this guy this is the revlon age defying targeted dark spot concealer treatment this is a really strange product like i know that the maybelline instant age rewind line also has this like sponge tip kind of look to it but this one I don't know, it's like not the right color and it's a weird sponge tip and it's been sitting in my drawer for a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this product as well. I see two of my Tarte concealers hanging out down here. These are the Maracuja Creaseless Concealers in the color Light and Fair. These were absolutely beautiful products. I love this concealer. It's a really, really great coverage. It lasts a long time. The wear time of this is really, really good. Both colors worked for me at various points in my, like this was really good for the winter, this was good for the summer, but these products have gotten a little bit old and so they are going to go ahead and go. I find myself not using them over other products because I feel like they've gotten on the older side. Like I definitely had these before I broke my back. So they literally sat in this drawer the whole time that I was in Tennessee recovering from that. So I just, they need to go. I have a lot of other products that I do like and that are new and that I'm using. So these ones have got to go, but this is a product that I would potentially repurchase in the future because I did really like them. We have the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer in number four. This is a beautiful full coverage concealer. This will cover up anything you wanted to cover up. It's a good color match for me. This is one of those products I feel like everyone needs a product in their collection that works the way this one does in terms of just covering anything that you need it to cover in the right color for you. So this is definitely going to be staying. This is another one. This is still sealed, but I've owned this before. This is the Boots number no. seven concealer in 05 medium. The reason that I have these and that I've used it in the past is because this is supposedly a dupe for the Clay de Poe concealer, which if you guys have watched my videos for a while, you know is my all time favorite holy grail concealer. The reason that I don't have it right now in my collection is because it's $70 for a concealer, which is insane. So I just can't justify spending that all the time. I forgot that I had this because it was at the very bottom of this container in the back of my drawer. So I'm going to move this to the front and try to use this again and see if it really is comparable to the Clay de Poe because I feel like at one point I owned them both at the same time and I remember thinking that they were. So I'm curious to now that it's like been a while since I've used that kind of product, if using this, if I will feel the same way. So I'm kind of excited to give that one a try. You guys, there's a little baby kitten at my feet underneath this drawer. Oh, he's so cute. All right, so this is the Rimmel Match Perfection Concealer in Light, and this is another one that has one of those brush tips. So this one is immediately going in the trash. I feel like 
This is probably only a couple of months old. I also feel like I'm gonna get a lot of comments on this video telling me that I am too cautious with my makeup and that it's all fine. But I don't know guys, I feel like I have enough that I don't need to be, like I don't need to not throw things away once I start getting that feeling that they're getting a little bit old. So this one's going to be tossed. And then we have the Bourjois Healthy Mix Concealer. This is another product that I got in a swap from the UK. I have not used this product enough to have a really good opinion on it. I do know that the color match is really good, but like I said, I have not tried this enough to know if I like it or if I would recommend it. I'm gonna put this with the Boots Number no. 7 Concealer and give this one more of a try so that I can say something about it. Why is it in my collection if I really can't say anything about it, right? This is the Manhattan Wake Up Concealer. This is another one that I got in a swap and another one that I just don't know enough about. So it's gonna go right there with the Bourjois and I'm gonna figure it out. This is a MAC Conceal and Correct Duo that is like really cool in theory. It has a yellow side to cancel out darkness and then this like neutral side that you put on top of it. But these colors do not work for my skin tone. Like this is the light version. They had a couple different versions for different skin tones and this is the light one and it does not work for me so I am passing this one on to possibly Blair because it might work for her skin tone if not I'm gonna see if my mom wants it I have the amazing cosmetics amazing concealer in the color fair this is another one like the makeup forever full coverage concealer it is a really great thick concealer that covers up pretty much anything and actually it's almost gone I have like that much product left so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one up and you'll probably see it in an empties video then the last thing I have are these five NYX concealer sticks I love these these. They are so good. They're so creamy. Like, let me show you. They are just like so good. So creamy. The yellow helps cancel out under eye circles. The green helps cancel out redness. The purple, remind me what purple does. I feel like I don't even know what purple cancels out. I knew at one point, which is why I have it, but these are just like so beautiful. And then we have this one, which is called Glow, which actually the only reason I have this, because it's gonna look super dark, is because I can actually contour with that color because it's a good color for my skin. It's looking a little orange on camera, but in real life it's a little bit more of a like beige color. And then we have Light, which is my concealer color right there. Because you do want your concealer to be lighter than your skin to you know lighten those areas. So these are great. They're definitely something that I would recommend from the drugstore. They are very, very, very inexpensive and they're very creamy and beautiful and full coverage. So now that I've gone through every single thing in this drawer, I am going to put everything back that I'm keeping and I will show you what it looks like and then we will go through all of the things that I'm getting rid of. Okay, and here is the after. So the way that I've organized this is I've put all of the foundations that I said were either new, so I haven't tried them, or I've tried them before but I'm not really sure and I need to try them again, right here in this first container, just so that they're right at the front of the drawer and I can find them quickly. I also have the three that are still in packaging over here that I need to try. Behind that, I have my four most used favorite foundations, my Laura Mercier Silk Cream, CoverGirl 3-in-1 Stay Fabulous, Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua, and Estee Lauder Double Wear right there in the front so that I can grab them easily. Then here I have all of the concealers that I need to try. They're either the ones that are brand new or the ones that I don't really have an opinion on and therefore I've not tried them enough are here. These are the ones that are like my go-to favorites. Some of these are actually gonna be plucked out right after this video and put back in my everyday bag because I'm currently using them. I only put them in the drawer for the purpose of this video in order to see a full collection of what I have. Then these are all of the other foundations that I showed you. These are ones that I wanna try more and then kind of going back into the ones that I know that I like and therefore they're kind of more back there. Then in the very back I have my Bobbi Brown Concealer Palette and my three backup silk cream foundations and the CoverGirl's hair smoothing foundation that's still in its packaging that I'm not really sure what to do with and I might end up decluttering it anyway. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that product. So I ended up getting rid of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven concealers. 
Six of these are going in the trash. Only one, this one, is new enough for me to justify giving away. So seven concealers and then foundations I have to round up because they're everywhere. 12 foundations are going. These six are the ones that are new enough that I'm going to give them away. I'm gonna let Blair go through them first. What she doesn't want, I'm going to give to my mom. We have the Bare Minerals Bare Skin that's a little too yellow for me. The Bomb Shelter is too dark. The BB Cream is too dark. The CoverGirl CG Smoothers, I just really don't like the formulation. The Rimmel Lasting Finish, this one's the one that's a little ashy for me. I kept the one that is more my color. And then the MAC Pro Longwear in number NW25, which is just too dark for me. And then the other six are the ones that are going to be tossed because they have just gotten too old. This one and this one have dried out. That one is almost empty and it's like the older one. This one has gotten old. That one has the weird sponge tip and it's gotten old. And that one's gotten old and it is expired. So these six are going straight into the trash. So 12 foundations and seven can concealers. I feel pretty happy with that because my goal was not to make my collection smaller. It was just to curate it so that I made sure that everything in there I really like because I feel like doing inventory of your makeup collection is important because things do get stuck in there even if you declutter the old stuff out a lot. You kind of just end up with some products that maybe aren't old yet, but you just don't like them. The color's not quite right. The formulation's not quite right. So it's good to go through it and like touch every single product and decide yes or no. So I'm very, very happy with the way this first makeup declutter drawer went, and I'm excited to do all of my other drawers. Let me know what you guys think about this series in a comment below and which section of the makeup collection you're most excited to see a declutter video on. And I will see you guys with my next video. Bye. And bye from the baby.